Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to another session in our Women Lead webinar series brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas. I'll be your host today, and we are delighted to bring yet another informative webinar to our Association of Professional Women. Our Women Lead webinars are designed for you, the professional leader in business, whether you're an aspiring woman leader or a woman leading people or projects, teams, or a company or business. We select topics and themes that support your goal to lead, achieve, and succeed more effectively in business. Now, our webinar today is just shy of an hour, and we'll be answering any questions that you've submitted online during the presentation portion of our webinar. Now, the focus of our webinar today is four personal image mistakes that women make when trying to project a professional or credible image. And I am so excited to introduce our thought leader for today. And uh, so let me introduce to you Miss Jose Brisebois, personal brand stylist for professional speakers, entrepreneurs, and professional women, and the founder of We Can Style. Now, Jose has styled professionals, entrepreneurs, public speakers, and TV personalities. Having worked all over the world, she uses her experience as an actor, anchor, reporter, TV host, and corporate marketing manager as a leverage to make speakers and leaders stand out, gain instant credibility, be memorable, and be seen as an authority. Through the inner and outer transformation they experience, what Jose loves the most is to witness women blossom, exude confidence, and look amazing from the inside out. She specializes in helping women find their unique, polished, and profitable profitable brand image, and this allows them to look successful and stand out from the crowd, get the promotion or the position they want, attract more ideal clients, speaking engagements, or life-changing business opportunities. They increase their income and transform their business or career to a whole new level of success. So please join me in welcoming Jose Brisebois. Take it away, Jose. Thank you, Patty. Um, so I, ironically, we were testing this before, but, um, I don't have, um, control of the slides anymore. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> well, of course not. <laughs> That's what technology is all about, right? <laughs> right. So, okay. So I think, um, we got it. Okay. All right. So as you were saying, this is, this is what I do. I help uh, women dress for where they want to be and what, not where they've been. So, you know, my clients typically, they just get a job or promotion faster and they look like an authority uh, in their field to attract more clients. So let's dive right in, in, in into the, the four mistakes. And the first mistake I will say is to me the most important because if you don't have this mistake taken care of there is no way you can look like a successful expert that you are and uh, we're talking about the fabric type so we're gonna have fabric type and we're gonna have um, quality of fabric so here I wanted to show an example on the left um we have like this kind of like cotton dress that you know even though it's a dress you can tell it's like a, a thinner kind of cotton mm -hmm. and that's just too casual looking and then there's this other type of material that we all love because it's i mean it's so prevalent now in fashion it's been around for i want to say about 10 years or so like that rayon type of material and uh, although I really like the style of this dress, the, the, the one with the big chunky gold necklace, it's uh, again, it's not a type of fabric that is suited for represented, representing yourself in a, in a professional manner. Okay. So on the right, I wanted to give examples of what is the kind of fabric that you want to to wear so you have uh, polyester blends and wool a lot of people think of wool well that's way too hot well no there's like so so many um you know nicer kind of garment that have wool in it that you can't even wear during the the summer so um then there's uh, wool silk 
uh, cotton wall cotton. They can take many different, you know, shape and form and aspects. So it's all in the 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 way that it looks. Like you don't want what's on the the left, definitely. Um, so I wanted to show examples of what I consider like just not high end enough. So that that's the best word I can come up with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also quality. So this is the dress on the left that I call the Macy's polyester dress. Like that, this is the typical dress made of 100% polyester they sell at Macy's and you know, the, the, the typical brand that will sell this is Polo Ralph Lauren. Um, and I just, even though the dress is in a really nice jewel tone that really looks good on you, it just doesn't project a, a um, super polished image. So yeah, that, and, and on the right, the same thing. I don't like, can you tell like the, on the bottom right, it just has this um, this finish that it doesn't look like super high quality. Yeah, so that, you that, know that bottom right with the sheer sleeves. Yeah, I Can just don't. I don't know who that looks good on. You know, honestly. So. Well, some women feel it looks really good on them. A lot of women actually. And that, that's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to teach like, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's, I mean, it just, it doesn't look um, quality enough. It just looks, it has a, like a cheaper feel to it. Right. So, you know, if, if your goal is like, if you're a coach, any kind of coach that you need to project, like that you are really good at what you do and so that you're successful, that is not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the quality. And so I also wanted to talk about the, the fabric type and structure. So as I said, okay, the cotton can take different shape and form. So um, we have this in cardigans, for example. And cardigans, they can look cute on some people depending on their personal brand style. But I want to say for like 97% of the population, I don't believe it's um, appropriate for a work setting to project a, a professional image hmm. because it it just looks like um, sloppy a little bit it doesn't have enough structure so bringing some structure in is really important when you're trying to project a professional image um, so these ladies they look cute right but I mean you wouldn't if you worked in a corporation, for example, you wouldn't see this lady, this cute lady on the far left as being a material for an executive, for example. So if she were a nice blazer with the same exact outfit, it would make all the difference in the world. Hmm. I also see a lot of women, especially here in San Diego, wear these like little knits you know that these ladies that are blurred in their face they wear their, their these little knit cardigans or vests because they want to they they don't want to be too hot and but they want to hide their arms well it this to me is like even worse than cardigans if i may say <laughs> it just it really does not look professional or polished and if you notice, I was talking about the rayon material earlier. The lady in the very middle, she wears this kind of top. It's a rayon top. Mm -hmm. And so she has this combo of rayon top and like this, this little vest that doesn't have any structure that has made of like a super casual fabric. So these are all examples that I would say to stay away from. And here I just wanted to show an example of the same, very, very similar outfit, but just throw on a nice blazer, a shirt, and the outfit looks so polished all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Do you guys see the difference? Do you yeah, see the difference? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like, isn't it so like, uh, how, what's the word, like obvious, like mm -hmm. if 
two women walked up to you and showed up like this, like you would definitely go for the one on the right to, you know, to, to, you would think like, Oh, this one must be like a professional executive or super good at what she does. Right. You know, Jose, let me ask you here. What if your work environment happens to be very casual, uh, you know, a place where sometimes people are wearing shorts and stuff like that? Yeah, well, in that case, like, of course, you, you don't want to, to, to wear your, like, you know, decked out, like, outfit. But I would say that if your goal is to be perceived as, you know, uh, the, the executive or the manager, you, you have to dress one notch better than the rest, especially, wow. especially if it's shorts and stuff. Like I, I would definitely um, dress just a little better so that you, you are still seen as like the, you know, the one that's like um, more in the executive range. Okay. Like I, I remember when I was uh, working in a corporation, there was a VP of finance and he was always like wearing shirts and polo. And one day he came in like wearing like a, a really nice button down crisp shirt and slacks. And people were like, Oh my gosh, finally, like now <laughs> he looks like our VP of finance. <laughs> so the way that you show up really, really makes a big difference in how you are perceived and what kind of opportunities you, you attract. You know, it's funny that, that, um, that you say that. I, I worked in a company where it was very, very casual and uh, everyone knew you could wear jeans, you could wear shorts, you could wear, it was pretty much everything went. But there was sort of this unspoken expectation that if you were in some sort of a leadership role, especially a senior leadership role, that you didn't dress that way. And it, mm -hmm. nobody said it, it was just sort of expected. And there was a gentleman that worked in, um, in finance, you know, like the story you were telling, and he used to just dress like everybody else, you know, shorts or jeans or what have you. And people used to really criticize him. And that's just so funny that at his level, that was not okay, even though it was okay for everybody else. Right. Yeah, because it's a leadership role and because you are, they are representing the company, so to speak, right? Right, right. Yeah. That's yeah, I know. It is interesting, but it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, you know, people judge people by their appearance uh, when they first meet you and... I, I don't know if that's ever going to change, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to give an example of this woman who's a, she's a very, very accomplished woman, went to MIT, like super, super smart. And she decided to, to um, quit the corporate world and start her own consulting company. And this is how she was showing up. And um, I, I, I'm not sure how things were going at that point for her, but I know it, like she was definitely not where she wanted to be. And so we worked on her image and now this is how she shows up. And she, um, she told me she has to pinch herself every day because she says, now I attract like higher level people, so to speak. Wow. She had she had a meeting with a billionaire developer. He complimented her outfit and he decided to make a deal with her in that very first meeting. Wow. Yeah, and and I really, really strongly believe is because she showed up as someone that was like competent and knew what she was doing and that was successful. Mm -hmm. And so he trusted that. And so the way that you show up is that powerful. So now we're at the second mistake. Um, the second mistake is not everyone knows how to dress to flatter their body sh shape. And it's very difficult to look polished if you don't dress to flatter your shape. So I'm giving an extreme example on the left here, but like, for example, the, the women that have carried their weight in the midsection, like you don't want to emphasize those, um, those areas. So the, what, the way to do it 
is on the right. So you wear like a, a empire waist and it's sort of like camouflages everything and it looks really, really nice. And it makes the body look so beautiful and, and, and proportioned. Mm -hmm. So knowing how to dress for your shape is really, really important to look polished. Because mm -hmm. I've seen women like this woman on the left just, you know, wear like a dress, for example, that just emphasizes this area as well. And it just doesn't look as polished. Mm -hmm. That's another example. So you see this on the left. Um, she has an inverted triangle shape. So you see how those thin straps here, they, because they are thin straps, they make the shoulders look way, way bigger. So the way to do it is to wear like thicker straps. But here again, um, when you're in inverted triangle, typically women have a bigger bust. So when you have a bigger bust, it's better to go with a V shape as a color. So Lisa Sasevich is a, you know, known business coach here and, and she has this kind of shape and she knows exactly how to, uh, to flatter her shape. So you see like here, she's bigger busted too, but she went for like a, a an actual like, um, space here in the, in the chest area. Mm -hmm. She has very thick sleeves. And so she, her body looks like proportioned right. so to speak mm -hmm. and she looks she looks really polished right yeah definitely <clears throat> and then the third is the colors so this is a my uh, former acting coach and um he uses the picture on the left as his uh, friendly guy um you know character and the picture on the right he uses for the sort of like bad guy character <laughs> and yeah and so you the, the, the fact that he knows that using his own colors to look more friendly and it works. He used to wear this color, the blue one for his good guy character, because he thought like it matches his eyes. Right. So it looks good. Right. But um, in fact, he was having such a hard time to, to be called by um, casting directors through his headshots. And he decided to do his colors. That's when he realized this is actually the color that looks good on him. And he was called like, um, he said something like 80% more. Hmm. He got called for the friendly guy wearing the right color. So all this to say, wearing the right colors will make you look much better. You see how he's got like a nice glow here. Yeah. And here is like, well, the lighting has to do with it too. But I mean, still. It makes yeah. a big difference. And um, so wearing your right colors will make you look more friendly, better, more beautiful, and all of these things. That's so that's, that's a third um, mistake that, yeah. that people make. Not, rare are the people that actually know their, um, their colors. That is such a, a graphic difference. I mean, those, those are two great pictures side by side. I know, right? And yeah. here's another one. This one is a client of mine, and that's all the colors she uses to, to wear. And then we, uh, I just put this on her for her headshot. Wow. So there's a big difference in the yeah. way that, you know, she showed up here. Mm-hmm. Looks like an entire, entirely different person, right? Yeah, definitely. She looks so much more like um, uh, appealing, welcoming, and confident. So, yeah, colors she looks they make an impact. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, okay, so now we're at the final mistake. So, the final mistake is about personal brand style. It's so important nowadays to really hone in on what your personal brand style is, because especially as a woman entrepreneur, because there's such a crowded market now, like, like, I don't know what's the statistics, um, but there's like 50% more women entrepreneurs coming out like every year starting a business. Like it's really like women are like taking over the world and I love it, <laughs> but that also means that you need to differentiate yourself and being the face of our own company it's so important to represent it just like 
it's as important as like having a nice professional looking website mm -hmm. because when you go out and you represent your business that's what people see you're the first thing they see when you have pictures on your website that's the first thing they see and standing out and having a strong point of view is important so this is a um, um, coach a speaker coach and that's how she she looks good right like she looks professional to me like she has a nice professional jacket on she just uh was you know trying to look professional and just as professional as everyone else right and there's nothing wrong with that but when she did this wow <laughs> yeah that's this is really who she is so she's a rebel at heart And when she really decided, okay, I'm just going to be fully me and not try to be like too like uh, cookie clutter, like, you know, corporate looking professional, mm -hmm. like her business starting to started to literally make like, she's in the millions right now. Wow. In what, yeah. And what she makes. So having a strong point of view, like a, a strong brand, personal brand image is really important. Can you go back to that previous slide? So you said this is, is one of your clients, right? No, not, not this lady. Oh, okay. But I just gave her as an example because um, I loved how her, her, whatever brand stash came up with is so strikingly different. <laughs> yeah. So I used her to just make a point that's like how important it is. So in your business, If you, if someone comes to you and they say, I feel like I just look like everybody else. What's your process? What do you, how would you kind of dive into them and pull some of that out to be able to remake them? So there's a few things that we do. I use a system that it's called the 12 archetypes. And the 12 archetypes is like a psychologically driven approach. So to speak that all of the big companies use. Mm -hmm. So McDonald's, Apple, Tesla, like all, any huge company you can think of, they have all gone through that process of finding who, which archetype represents them. Because what happens is like, when you find what your archetype is, people um, can consciously and or unconsciously totally identify with who you are, connect and relate. And they, they start like liking you like way more quickly and, and trusting you way more quickly. Okay. And as we know, like this is really important right now because uh, they say like now it's we're up to like 12 to 20. Um, uh, you need to be exposed like 12 to 20 times someone while well, having a strong brand it kind of decreases that number. Okay. So um So yeah, so the, 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 those 12 archetypes, so I use that. We identify what their archetype is. And then um, it's looking also at, at what's in your own closet because what's already in there is very telling. So my job is pretty much to take who you are, what's your archetype, and really boost it. Okay. Boost it to the maximum. I'm, I'm going to give more examples. Great, great. So this is an, a client of mine, actually, and um, she's uh, also like a, a business coach. And she came to me because she wasn't sure, like, you know, about her style. She already, although it doesn't really show here, but she already has really nice clothes. I, all I had to do with her is go in her closet. We didn't <laughs> even have to go shopping. That happens a lot of the times. All we had to do was really um, nailing and honing what her personal brand is. And this is what we came up with. So her brand is like a sage and a sage is like someone that's like super knowledgeable that ha that's academic. And so that, and of course, like my, when I start clients, it's always super chic because that's my, my trademark. So I don't really have clients that don't want to look chic <laughs> or, you know, polished. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's her. So she, she's, uh, she's way more like polished and, and can, can you see like that her, her uh, brand and her flair in those pictures? Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's a, it's a pretty strong message. This is who I am. And if 
kind of like proper academic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then, and then she has her dress shot, which is, uh, you know, um, I don't know if you know that photographer, but she, she's very, uh, very um what's the word glamorous so she uh she likes to do like all the nice dresses yeah but yeah so this is this is her her brand and oh i want to talk about uh this client too because her brand was the adventurer and um and the ruler which is um the adventurer i mean it speaks for itself so it's like so she likes people to gain freedom and have more balance in their lives so that they have freedom to do whatever they want. And so we, what I did with her is she already had quite a bit of like, kind of like tribal looking jackets in her closet. And, um, and so I took all of those. And I'm like, okay, you're going to wear those on a regular basis. <laughs> and, you know, of course I kind of like made outfits so that they all looked great every day with whatever she was wearing and um and then she has like this hair color and she loves the the pinks and kind of like mauve and stuff and so we brought that out in her brand so she she's the adventurer with like lots of like pinks and and mauves because her hair color is like different and that's another thing it's like what are the personal traits that you have that are kind of like make you noticeable so, and then, and also, um, when I style people, you want to be in that space where you don't want to be too bland or too sweet, because then it could make you either not stand out or not even look like professional enough, or on the other extreme is overstyled or overly sexy. And that also will do the same thing, not professional or you know, credible. <clears throat> and I think, you know, Rebecca, she, um, so Rebecca was like, she always dressed pretty like nicely and cute. She was very, very cutesy. So what we did with Rebecca is I kind of like sexied her up a, li a little tiny bit. Like she would never wear like, um, skirts like above the knee, like every, all her, her, uh, so I don't know if you can see my arrow here. Yeah, yeah. Her dresses were like all the way to here. So we just made, I kept her, she has a very romantic style. So of course, like we like really kept the romantic going. So see, she has the ruffles, mm -hmm. but it's way more um, sophisticated the way yeah. that, you know, she, she shows up now. And so we kept the romantic and, um, and made it more chic so that's yeah so that's uh, that those were examples of like personal branding so um so again i just want to reiterate that looking too bland or sweet is not going to make you stand out or perceive as ideal to get the job or the promotion that you want quickly or or you know to get your clients to notice you Mm -hmm. So bringing interest and personality to stand out and, you know, boost your, your, your image is what's going to um, create the most results. So I had this uh, client, he had been wanting this promotion for like over a year and uh, he just wouldn't get it, although he was very, very qualified. So he decided to work with me. And then um, after like, I kind of literally overhauled his old closet, he got his promotion in 30 weeks. Wow. After, yeah, after changing the way he dressed. And he said like, the management is treating me differently. They acknowledge me, they say hi to me. <laughs> wow. they, everyone is treating me differently. And he got his promotion. Well, that that's kind of, that's, very timely because I was going to ask you um, about people's perception of you and and if I want to get a promotion or if I want to be considered for a big project or something out of what I've been doing how much of my my image how much of the way I dress you know affects that oh my gosh I would say a ton and again I mean 
like you were saying before, it depends of your work environment, right? Like if everyone dresses in shorts, again, you have to dress at least a notch or two better, mm -hmm. like more, more uh, professional looking. And what happens is like people, like the, you know, your superior or your employers, unconsciously, they're going to start seeing you as a, a potential candidate for that job because you look like this position. Right. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. it does. And if you don't look this like, like you belong in that position, well, it's going to be much harder for them to kind of like consider you as a candidate. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, it's one of the most important things that, along with your, you know, your expertise and, you know, talent and everything, mm -hmm. but it's really, really important. And I've seen, I've seen it happen so many times. Yeah. Well, you know, they say that, that people make a judgment about us in less than 30 seconds. And yeah. so if, if you, and now you've got to work yourself out of that perception, you know, so. Yeah. And do you know how long it takes to work yourself out of that perception? Mm -hmm. I, it I takes would... five years. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Wow. It takes a long time because the first time that, that they met you and that's the impression they got, that's what sticks with them. Mm-hmm. And then even if you, you start dressing better, well, I mean, if you start dressing better, like it should be less than five years, but still, they're going to remember you for how you showed up in the first place. Yeah. Well, do you think uh, that if you are dressing, you know, one or two levels above everybody else, does, does that make you look unapproachable? I personally don't think so. And I feel like being approachable or not, has everything to do with the way that you carry yourself and how, you know, how warm you are as a person. Mm -hmm. the, like, yeah, people might get a little like um, in intimidated or, or, or impressed, but being impressed, I don't think is a bad thing. Right. I think that it's inspiring to impress other people in the way that you carry yourself. Yeah. Uh, so if you impress other people and you are warm at the same time, I think that's a winning combination. Um, for some, for the people that are, you know, kind of like distant or cold, um, colors, like we were talking before, help a lot in making you look more approachable. Well, this picture you have up right now, um, talk about flip-flops in the workspace. Right. <laughs> well, that's funny you say that because um, my husband happens to have one of those jobs where everyone can go work in shorts and t-shirts. <laughs> and everyone, I'm like, oh my gosh, how uh, uh, ironic that I do what I do and that's how you go to work every day. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I don't think it's okay to wear flip-flops in the workspace unless you work in a surf shop, maybe. But I, I just don't think it's, um, I don't know. I guess it really depends on in the industry you work in, but I personally would, regardless of what it is, I would never go work in a company wearing flip-flops. That's my short answer. Yes. <laughs> Were you looking for, for another? No, no, life? I just, I, it seems like there's certain things that are, um, if you wear it a certain way, you might get away with it, but it's, it's like a slippery slope, you know, then you get into how casual is too casual. And okay. So you mean like, let's say a woman wears like, um, a nice dress or a pencil skirt and then she's going to throw on some flip flops right. that kind of like looks cool with it. But yeah, I, I, I see what you mean, but I still wouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. I like just wear like real shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, here I wanted to show examples of like, again, personal style. So these are all very bland looking kind of corporate, looking women and these is more these are more like okay it is possible to look professional and and you know 
not look like a cookie clutter. Mm -hmm. So these are all examples like this woman on the far right, like she is wearing this nice button down shirt, but she's, she goes for the, the snake print skirt, which, you know, gives it like uh, some pizzazz and it's like, okay, yeah, this woman, I, I, I get her. Mm -hmm. Like she, she's got some fire in her. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And, uh, princess uh, or no, is she a princess? No, that duchess. Du duchess, the mm -hmm. duchess, Meghan Markle. Like, so that's a, such a nice dress. It has an interesting detail. Like it's not, it's very, very, uh, sleek professional looking, but it's got like a cool detail enough that you're like, Oh yeah. Like she's, she's got it going on. Mm -hmm. This is a little more like artsy, but I think she, she looks great for a more like artsy place. She has this very romantic thing going. And like this, I want to give like an example of the power suit, but like adding some very like cool interest to it. Mm -hmm. um, these are all very successful um, women entrepreneurs here in California. And I just wanted to show like, did you see how none of them wear like that polyester dress I was talking about earlier? They're all wearing like something that looks nice polished put together you know like nice nice fabric um same here the, all of these women are like super duper successful like you know like uh super duper successful ceos uh this is tori birch do you see like then this is like a super nice silk luxurious silk top um here like a tweed blazer like all of the fabrics are like really nice and i want to show again here look at her personal style like she's the ceo of this like really like uh successful tech company and she's wearing like leather pants but she's rocking them because she's wearing like this really nice jacket and a nice uh shirt so you don't have to look like like a corporate you know robot mm -hmm. like you can you can play with with clothes to really represent your personality and this lady i can't remember her name but she's a very uh oh like this super famous company we all know it anyway so you know she she does wear like a, a very traditional suit because of the industry she's in but she goes with like this bright orange super nice silk material top yeah. So I, I just wanted to show like examples of really famous CEOs on how they, they show up and how they dress. Right. Uh, these are all Latina CEOs. Again, more examples. They all look super polished. You see the silk cotton ball here. Like again, leather, like just play with the material to represent who you are. Again, silk here. So these, I just wanted to show like examples, like, okay, do you see the difference between these ladies and, mm -hmm. and the dresses here? Yeah. Like, there's a world of difference. So I, I wanted to make a point on how important it is to don't think that showing up in a dress because it's a nice jewel color will do the trick. It, it doesn't like it. You really have to make sure that the, the fabric is, is up to par. And you don't have to pay like an arm and a leg. Like I, I think I like to call myself the queen of high end bargain shopping because I, it's very, very feasible to find amazing, amazing quality at a huge discount. Like today more than ever, there's like flash sale sites and consignment sites. And all, I mean, there's a ton of resources out there where you can like, find amazing clothes, amazing quality for less than what you would pay for this dress here at Macy's. Um, and finally, I just want to say like, it's a, it's a scientific fact that the way that um, you look and the way that you feel will make a difference in what you attract in your life. So the idea is like, you want to embody where you want to be. You want to dress like envision who what what position do you want like well, where do you want your business to be and and embody that that vision 
and that's an example of a client of mine who did that so she uh, that's how she was dressing and now she dresses like this and she makes like so much money selling from the stage people like always are like telling her how amazing she looks and the thing also that i want to that's why i'm showing her is because she's she's basically selling a mindset program to where like you know like uh anything that could block you from making money like those subconscious beliefs right well that's what she sells a program that like that shatters those limiting beliefs and so she she's selling basically how to make more money right and so because her whole business is around that just like any business coach marketing coach mindset coach you know if you're in the business of teaching pe people how to make more money well you'll better look yourself like you make <laughs> money right yeah so um so she does so so good now and um oh well i just like as a joke i thought that would be funny so <laughs> like you want to look like this when you meet with potential client when you want to be seen as the perfect candidate for that promotion you don't want to look like this or this <laughs> <laughs> it's the same exact thing um so yeah the the whole idea is you want to exude more confidence because when you dress to feel amazing and to look amazing well it, it will transpire in the way that you um carry yourself and also like my clients they, they experience more joy uh, in life and their relationships so it has like a ripple effect because they feel so much better about themselves right so it really like affects their life in general and uh yeah that's that's what it does do you have any questions well, there, there is one question that came in and, and it was about, um, you know, you talked about dressing for your body type, which I think is, is huge in terms of making you feel more confident. It, mm -hmm. it seems like um, the comment was that we try to hide our body type by mm -hmm. the things we choose to wear instead of um, dressing for that body type could you say a little bit about that about the difference between hiding it and dressing for it well the whole idea is to flatter your assets it's to flatter what you have and i don't know like i i understand the 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 point of hiding versus dressing for and i don't know if there's like um there's a fine line of explaining what's the difference there but the way i like to look at it is just like dressing to flatter it not to hide it because i mean i've seen people trying to hide and it, they just look that they're trying to hide it's very very different mm -hmm. like dressing to flatter versus to hide is entirely different so then for example like you know some women they like to to wear like an oversized sweater just to hide everything well there's a difference between doing this and there's a difference between choosing a silhouette that will just flatter your shape versus like going oversized to hide does that an answer the question yeah i think so and and it seems like when you when you end up just trying to hide it you actually draw attention to it yes you know? You're actually making the you're making it worse mm -hmm. because it just shows you're trying to hide it. Right. And so people are drawn to whatever area you're trying to hide. And you know, one of the slides that you showed that was was your um, your client that was the one who tells you to get rid of these limiting beliefs and and so forth mm -hmm. and make more money. Yeah. Um, it, why i mean she looked she looked cute in the other outfits and so forth but it was it sort of clear that she didn't spend a lot of time on herself on buying you know nice yeah. things for herself right. so is that sort of a female tendency that we we think this looks cute this is okay i'm not going to spend i'm going to you know shop at target and not shop at you know right wow. yeah yeah that's what i see oh, oh it's good enough that look that that looks good enough. It's it's okay. That's that's the thing. 
but and and then there's there's another factor that comes into play here not only is looking good enough is not okay you need to to feel and look amazing that's that's the huge difference there and um and furthermore looking good enough when you don't particularly have a, a trained eye for fashion can lead to a bit of a disaster because you know when we buy clothes we buy clothes because we like them right like we think it looks nice but the problem is like no one has been trained on how to actually dress so a lot of the time people might think it looks good and people might even get compliments but Sometimes compliments is just to be nice. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't really mean, oh, well, the way they, they might like your shirt, but your shirt might not look amazing and mixed with everything else. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I really like that shirt. I just don't like it on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So the, there could be a ton of factors there, but what I do see is that, um, is that women think good enough is okay and they don't they they've never been taught how to dress and mm -hmm. so thinking it's okay thinking that the, they're good at you know picking their clothes is is a combo that i see a lot of the times and unfortunately um my whole message is gain your confidence back from all of the bullies that you've encountered in your life so i'm not one to go tell these women well actually you don't look good like and so that's one of the hardest part of my jobs is is really inspire women to uh to um up their game without telling them that they don't look good you know what i mean right it's like a it's it's a fine balance and uh yeah it's a, that's the biggest challenge so, Jose, how would people uh, get in touch with you and, and what kinds of things, what kind of services do you provide to people when they, they think, hey, I need a, I need a do-over, I need an image makeover? Well, f first they can go on my website. I actually have a really fun uh, personal brand style assessment. So they can start like identifying their, their brand. And um, and then uh, I work one-on-one -on -one right now, mainly with clients. I have an online course that's coming out where I'll be able to work with many women at the same time, and it's going to make the styling services way more affordable. But for now, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, it's like anything. You get what you pay for. So working one-on-one -on -one is what's going to provide the biggest transformation. And it depends on what the client needs. Like, like I said, like one of them, uh, this client didn't need to go shopping at all. We, we just had to go in her closet and, and really uh, clarify her brand and then putting outfits together. So sometimes that's just what's needed because most women, they, as I said, we're not taught on how to dress. So they don't really know how to assemble their clothes, make like really polished outfits. And so it's just a matter of going in the closet and shop in your own closet and then come out with like an amazing array of outfits. Or sometimes shopping is highly needed. Like some women, they just don't have much in their closet and then we just have to go shopping. And so, yeah, it's one of those two. And I, I also have like, um, you know, like services that are just for like headshot session, for example, or Oh, some people are like, I just want like you to, to, uh, to get me like five amazing outfits for when I have to go speak or mm -hmm. yeah, it depends on the service. I, I always have a conversation ahead of time to really assess what the person needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a great slide. This is a great example here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so any um any last uh any last thoughts that you have to share for us or um anything else you would like to direct folks to go take a look at on your website uh no i think that that um personal uh, brand style assessment is is really quick and fun so that's a that's a great way to start and um 
yeah and then you you can you can send me an email through my website as well if you have any questions that's great well jose i have really enjoyed this um i am going to be getting rid of my um my macy's dress <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a Macy 100% polyester dress? I'm pretty sure almost everybody does. <laughs> so that's going to yeah. go out of my closet now. So yeah. this is really But good okay, fun. so so then the fact that you have one after uh, hearing this presentation, can you see how it doesn't serve you? Totally, totally. And and you know, especially the the body shape and the fabrics and the all of that, you know. So I, I loved what you said about well, I just loved the whole thing. Uh, you know, everything that you need to look at, the fabrics and the quality of the fabric and the body shape and the all of that. So what a difference it makes. So I I encourage everybody who is who is online with us and those of you that listen to this afterwards in the recording, you know, go check out Jose's website. And what is your website? Give it to us real quick. So it's it's either my name, Jose Brisebois, what you saw on screen here dot com, or um, easier is we can style so w-e-c-a-n style.com perfect awesome well thank you again jose really appreciate you being our thought leader today and for all the rest of you we will be back again soon with our next women lead webinar series and just to help you lead achieve and succeed as a female leader in business again thank you so much jose and looking thank you. forward to seeing all of you out there again Thanks. Bye. Bye.